we are going through great expectation series. Now, do you have a great expectation for the future? Now, just to be honest with you, it is very hard for me to think about bright future because a pandemic just for two years that we're just passing it, but also we hear the reality of wars that's happening in Eastern Europe, but also the worries about future because of the possibility of shortage of food that the poorest countries would be affected the first, and then that can spear, they can spread out all around the world, and that can create a chaos. So how can we expect for the future? A lot of younger generations do not have much of a high hope for the future, so they are not necessarily studying really hard and because what's the point of studying at this moment if we do not have any future so this is a great problem however the Bible gives us the great expectation no matter what circumstances we go through so today is the last day of going through this great expectation series and we're gonna study from John chapter 14 verse 12 because Jesus is promising to his disciples about the wonderful wonderful works that they are going to do. So let's look at today's passage. Truly, truly, I say to you, the one who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I am going to the Father. Wow, this is a wonderful promise. Now, what does he say? He says, you will do the same work that I do, and you will do the greater works, greater works than these you will do. Now, this is amazing. However, we have to be very careful because there's a possibility of misinterpreting this verse. Now, when it comes to greater works or same works that Jesus did, okay, you might think that, wow, I would do the same work that Jesus did, even the greater works than he did. This is amazing. So, Jesus fed 5,000 people. Well, I, I can feed 10,000 people. Jesus raised the Lazarus who were dead for three days. Well, I can raise up someone who, who are dead for one month and two months, and there's no hope, but I can raise him up from the dead. Well, you can think of all these things. Now, you, when you read the Bible, you see the great works that Jesus did, and you, you might have a great expectation that you can do even much fantastic, much more fantastic, much greater works than Jesus did. So you may be very excited, but we have to be very careful because we need to know the context, okay? I know there are some people who are doing a wonderful miracles and they're doing amazing, amazing uh, ministries out there and they put those videos of their ministries on YouTube and a lot of people following that. Oh, praise God, if they are genuine followers of Jesus Christ, praise the Lord but also there's a possibility that there are people who are just mimicking what Jesus was doing but they do not truly have a relationship with Christ Jesus because in Matthew 7 very clearly it's a warning that there are people who are saying Lord Lord we did all this great works in in your name we raised the dead we healed the sick and then we did all amazing amazing works in Jesus' name and Jesus said I never knew you Depart from me. Depart from me. And they were thrown into hell, right? So that is not just a figurative speak, speech, but it is the reality that there's a possibility that there will be people, there will be people who are doing wonderful works without Jesus. So what should we, uh, how can we do the true greater works? So that is the first portion of today's message. And also, we're going to talk about what are those great work, greater works, okay? Is it just a healing? Is it a miracle? What is it? What is Jesus ta really talking about, okay? So the first one is this. How can we do the greater works, the same work that Jesus did? So let's go back to today's verse. It says, truly, truly, I say to you, the one who believes in me. So this is the key key condition requirement truly believes okay if you believe in christ jesus then you will do the same work that he did and even greater works than um, the works that he did okay so this is a very very important so we need to believe in Christ Jesus. But what does it mean to believe in Him? What well, John, the book of John is really emphasizing on belief, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, because the famous verse John 3.16, 
Whoever believes in the Lord will never will not be punished, but will be will have eternal life, right? So we need to believe in Christ Jesus to begin with, to be saved, to be born again. But even when you are born again, it does not stop right there. This journey of faith continues. So the book of John is really um, f- emphasizing the importance of faith in our spiritual journey. But what is really the faith? Uh, meaning here now faith in many times in the book of john is described as being in christ jesus in other words abide in christ in john chapter 15 verse 5 the the following chapter of today's passage is saying abide in me and you in me now apart from me you will do nothing What does that mean? Apart from Jesus Christ, there is nothing we can do, okay? So believing in Christ Jesus, it really means to be in Christ Jesus, to live in Christ Jesus and follow Him and love Him and obey Him, okay? That's what it means to abide in Him. Many times in the book of John, it's saying you need to, uh, if you truly love me, you will keep my commandments, So if you truly abide in me, you will obey his words, okay? Going back to Matthew 7, I mentioned that there are people who are doing amazing miracles, but they were just doing miracles even if they used Jesus' name, but they did not have relationship with Jesus. They were just performing a great miracles for their own reputation, out of their desire to be recognized by people, but they did not abide in Christ Jesus, meaning that they were not obeying Jesus Christ. So Jesus was saying to them in Matthew 7 that these people were not obeying so that Jesus did not know them so that they would be thrown into hell but there's other group that they were following Christ Jesus they were obeying Christ Jesus and they're the ones who are entering into heaven because they have relationship with Christ Jesus so the relationship is the key to do the great works to do the greater works than these okay so apart from Jesus Christ you cannot do anything Even if you do something great in front of people, in the eyes of people, secular world may say, you did a great job and you are a very successful um, Christian, you are a very successful minister, pastor, if you do not have any relationship with Christ Jesus, if you do not follow, if you do not obey Christ Jesus, then your work is nothing and Jesus does not know you. So, abide in Christ Jesus. That's the first requirement. That is the foremost uh, important condition that we can do the great works or greater works. The question is, do you abide in Christ Jesus? Do you follow Him? Do you truly obey Him? And if not, then you need to go back to Christ Jesus. You need to put your faith in Christ Jesus and saying, Jesus, you are my Lord. You are my Savior. I used to live my life for myself. And even I was using you for my own glory, for my own reputation. So please forgive me. Oh Lord, please receive me. And I want to follow you. I want to obey you. Please let me abide in you, you in me, so that I can do great works that you did and even greater works than the works that you did so that I can glorify your name, okay? So please pray and come to Jesus Christ today and abide in Him and do the greater works. Now the second point is this, what is this greater works? What is Jesus is really talking about? Is Jesus is talking about the great uh, miracles that pe- the, his disciples will perform. Well, that is part of it, but there's much more than that. So that is something that we're going to touch on. But before we go into that, I want us to look at the context here. When you see all these promises, and you might think like, oh, if Jesus is ta- telling me directly right now about this great promise, I will be very, very excited. Well, The context was very far from what you can imagine. Now, John chapter 14, starting from 13 through 17, that is the famous prayer of Jesus Christ when he was doing Lord's Supper, uh, Last Supper with his disciples. When Jesus revealed the truth to his disciples, I will leave and you will not follow me. You cannot really uh, come to me at this moment. What does that mean? Jesus is telling his disciples that he's going to die. 
Now that was very shocking to the disciples. They were all disappointed. They were devastated by what Jesus was saying. And Jesus was even predicting that uh, Peter would deny Jesus three times. So that is that was even getting worse. But in that moment, in that depressing moment, Jesus was giving this wonderful promise. Okay, so sometimes or many times the promise doesn't come when we are happiest. Okay, sometimes the promise can come when we are the most difficult and disappointed moment. Now, this is what this is when he was promising that these disciples, if they truly believe in Christ Jesus, if they truly abide in him, and if they truly obey him, that they're gonna do the greater works. Now, what is this greater work? works. It looks like there's nothing happening. Now, Jesus is about to die on the cross. Of course, that is definitely disappointing to his disciples. But in three days, Jesus was risen from the dead. And then he showed himself to many disciples. And then Jesus was not staying there for a long time. He stayed there for 40 days and he was taken up to heaven so it looks like the story was over but that was not the over over that was not the end of the story that was just the beginning of the story so let's look at this today's verse again it says he will do greater work greater works than this he will do because i am going to the father now what does that mean because jesus is going back to the father meaning that he will die he will rose again he will be ascended into heaven but after that what's happening is he will send his spirit which is the holy spirit and that is the uh, the end of end portion of the book of john the book of john is not the last book of the bible right what's the next book which is the book of acts now book of acts is an amazing book of this greater works Okay, so Jesus was not just speaking about the promise that will never happen, but that happened right in the next book, Book of Acts, is the evidence, is the proof, is the history, is the foundation of the greater works that Jesus is talking about. Why? Because as Jesus was saying here in this verse, I'm going to the Father. Right, And Jesus is going to the Father to prepare the place for his disciples to come, but also to send the Holy Spirit. So after 40 days later that Jesus was ascended, he did send his Spirit. That's what's happening in Acts chapter 1 and 2. Now Jesus promised to his disciples that when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive what? the power, and you will become my witnesses from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and all around the world. That is what the greater, greater work that Jesus meant. And then Acts chapter 2, they received the Holy Spirit. 120 people received the Holy Spirit and they began to speak the word of God in different languages. And then, you know, they, the gospel was preached, was shared in across the geographical um, boundaries, across the linguistic boundaries, across the racial boundaries, and a lot of people began to hear the gospel of Christ Jesus. The greater worse began to happen. Now, why is it greater than what Jesus did? When Jesus was on the earth, he focused on ministry. His ministry was focused on the Jewish people in Israel. Okay, and that was his purpose. He came to preach the kingdom of God starting in Jerusalem. However, even though his ministry was in that, his greater work has a much broader scope. And that's what we see in the book of Acts, that it was beyond Israel, boundaries of Israel, but it was preached to the surrounding nations. And we can see in the book of Acts, the apostle Paul carried the gospel of Christ Jesus beyond Israel, even up to Rome. Now, Rome was, was like the biggest, the most powerful country at that time. It was represented as the world. Right? So the gospel was preached to the world, and then that greater works is being carried on even until now. And that is the story of the greater works. Now these people, these disciples received the Holy Spirit, and they started a first 
church and we see the amazing works of the Holy Spirit that was happening in Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. And Lord added the believers every day on a daily basis. And also in chapter 3, we see chapter 3, verse 6, Apostle uh, Peter performed the wonderful miracles that I do not have any money to give to you, but in Christ Jesus' name, rise up. So he healed the sick. And chapter 4, we see another great miracles happening, and the gospel was preached to um, all around the places. Now, chapter 5, there were oppositions. There were people, religious leaders were very jealous, and they were trying to stop this greater works by persecuting them. They even put them in prison. But the word of God, the greater works, never stopped. In chapter 6, verse 1, the number of disciples increased. So there was uncontrollable work of the Holy Spirit were performed, and that was the greater works that was done through the church. That was done through the believers who believed in Christ Jesus. So John 14, 12 was accomplished, was being fulfilled through his believers. And now it is being continued. Now in Acts 12, 24, the word of God was uh, progressing, was advancing. And Acts 19, 10, when Paul was in the city for two years, everyone heard the gospel. And Acts 19, 12, when even when Paul was putting the handkerchief or his clothes on someone and the sickness was gone and demonic demon possessed man was released from demonic darkness in Christ Jesus' name. So we see in chapter 28 verse 31, the last verse of book of Acts, they kept on preaching Jesus and there's no one could stop them. No one could prevent them from speaking the sharing the Christ Jesus. So the gospel is being progressed. Gospel is being preached continue it it is continue continuing to grow even now so the answer is this what is the greater works it is the advancement of God's kingdom not just in Israel but in in the United States Congo Korea Japan uh, Russia and Ukraine and all around the world That is what God is doing through His church. Now, some people may misunderstand. Wow, I am doing greater works than Jesus did, so I am bigger than Him. I am greater than Him. No, the Bible never says you will be greater than Jesus, but it says you will do greater works than what He did. Why? Because you are in Him. He is in you. So it's not you doing the greater works. So don't be misunderstanding, okay? Don't be proud of yourself. We will never be greater than teacher. We will never be greater than our Lord and Savior. He is the one is who is doing the greater works in and through you. You are not the uh, you are not the subject. You are the instrument that God is using. God is the subject. The object is the greater works for His kingdom. So always make sure that you are being used by God for this greater works for God's kingdom. So it's not for us. It's not for our reputation. It is not for uh, writing a great story about ourselves in the best-selling book. It is continuing the work of the Holy Spirit uh, after book of Acts 28 verse 31. The book of Acts is being still being written for through about this greater works through us by the Holy Spirit. God himself. So, what about us now? Are you in a very difficult, depressing situation and you feel like there's no hope? You're in a hopeless situation now so that there's nothing you can do. Well, the answer is, yes, we are in the hopeless situation and it looks like maybe it doesn't, it's not only uh, looking like, but it maybe the reality is there's nothing we can do about it. Okay? However, remember when Jesus gave the promise, it was most depressing moment for disciples. Their best teacher, the one that they left everything to follow, is about to be gone. So you might think, if you were in, your, in their shoes, you might feel like my dream is gone and there's no point and um, I totally wasted my time all my life. How can I get back to where I was? 
you might have all kinds of questions and worries about future. But at that time, Jesus gave this wonderful hope. And then he says, if you believe in me, you will do the same work. The work that I started will not be finished, will not be stopped. You will do even greater works than this. So continue. Continue this work. Hope in me. Believe in me. This is what Jesus was saying to them. And Jesus is still saying the same thing, same promise for us, to us. So no matter what depressing situations that we are going through right now, we need to hope in Him. We need to believe in Him because He is going to do greater works uh, than that through us. There's a great example. D.L. Moody was a great preacher in 19th century. But when you look at D.L. Moody's situation, you may, like, you may think like he would be the most depressing person because he was uneducated. He was a shoe salesman. He was not recognizable. He was very short. He was fat, not a good looking. He even had a speech impediment, right? And he could not even you know, pronounce some words correctly. How in the world this person could be could do a greater works. But God used Dia Moody in an amazing, powerful way. He, God used him, Dia Moody, to lead more than a million people, million souls to Christ to Jesus. He became one of the most powerful preacher in history. Well, he, his speech impediment was still there. He was still weak. He was still short. He was still fat. He was still not good looking. He was still uneducated. He could be almost all the most depressive person. However, God used him to do the greater works than all this. So likewise, no matter what weak situation you are in or whatever, however weak person you are, believe in Christ Jesus, meaning that abide in Christ Jesus. And He is going to use you for the greater works, which is to use you to lead souls, many souls to Christ Jesus. The vision God has given me is to raise up 21st century Moses. But 21st century Moses may not be the most highly educated, most good looking, most powerful people. No, no, no. They can be most uneducated. They can be most unpleasant uh, looking person. Doesn't matter. Okay. What, whatever you are, you can be used by God as 21st century Moses. Moses led. 2 million people out of Egypt to the promised land. Likewise, he can use you to lead more than 2 million people to Christ Jesus, even much more than uh, God used D.L. Moody. How is it possible? Not because of who you are, not because the cap capability that you have, but because you believe in the Lord, because you abide in Him, so that God can use you to do greater works than all these things. So let's have this great expectation. No matter what, regardless of all the situations that we see in the social media and the TV, no matter how many people are worried about future, we do not have to join them. We need to join Christ Jesus, His greater works through believing in Him and through, being ab uh, through abiding in Him. So let's pray together for the Lord will do the greater works in and through us. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you for this wonderful news, wonderful hope that you have given us, not only to disciples, but also to us today. Father, we pray that you would continue to use us so that we can do the greater works. But Father, we pray that uh, we would truly abide in you so that we will uh, truly believe in you and trust in you so that we can truly be used by you for the greater works than for your kingdom. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' holy name, I pray. Amen.